is Sean Battle from People's Open Mic, and you're listening to the Hip Hop Chucky Radio Show with Cool Tie Chicky Chicky G. It's a Cool Tie Chicky Chicky G. Production. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with no other than Smash Hits. Smash, welcome to the Hip Hop Junkie Radio Show. What's up, homeboy? Chillin', brother. How you feeling today, man? I'm good, enjoying this beautiful weather. No doubt. Right out the gate, let's talk about that awesome song, man, you did with um Dion. And, is it Dion or Dion? Dion Music. Dion Music. Okay, let's talk about that song, man. Great song, and it's a great video. And you never hear me talk like that about artists from this area, but great song, get video. Talk about it. Well, basically, song name is Want Me featuring Dion Music. Crazy record in that pop rock lane. Stadium rocker. Oh, man, I'm talking Grammys, VMAs. Straight like that. Yeah, that video definitely was um different, but I know the side of y'all can't. Y'all definitely make a left turn, man, and y'all videos and stuff like, yeah, she just recently went around the earth, you know, and you're doing that right. Adams Family thing, man. Who can who comes up with the concepts, man, to both videos, actually? It's crazy. I'm going to start with Yaz first. Well, Yaz is a very creative young girl, you know. That's why I brought her on the Cash Cow. You know, shout out to her mother, Michelle, for keeping her in order. You know, yeah, shout sc- out to, to the momager, Michelle. Yeah. Definite, definite. You know, but let me get to the um, subject. You know, uh, Yaz came up with the concept. I asked her what type of video she wanted to do for it. And she said, uh, can you put me up in space? And I said, yeah, we can do that. You know, because I got a partner, Sergio. Shout out to him. Crazy with the graphics. Like, he's he's crazy with it, man. You know, straight Steven Spielberg, man. You know, <laughs> like we taking it there with these videos. So, uh, she came up with the concept and we made it happen. As far as with mine's want me. You know, I had a photo shoot, so I had a concept where I wanted to have a girl behind me holding me because the name of the song is called Want Me. So I thought about it. I said, hands. I said, wait a minute. The thing from Adam's family. And I don't know, man. I just be thinking crazy. So that's how it came about, you know, and I got all my crew together. Dev played Gomez. Uh, Jackie played Morticia. Michelle played the grandmother. Yaz played Wednesday. Scythe played Uncle Fester. Shout out to Daycar who played Lurch. And oh yeah, uh, Light Epps. You know, he's... I ain't even gonna give y'all his part, man. He's a special part in there, man. It's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they definitely went all out for that, whoever came up with the idea. Now, that was you and Serge, or that was all y'all collectively? Well, basically, I directed the video. You know, I okay. came up with all of the concepts. Shout out to Dev Beats, man. Like, this dude Shots always come through for me, man. And um, he hooked me up with the Connect as far as uh, filming it at the, uh, the Brighton Ashlam. You know, the uh, number one haunted house in the tri-state area. Just was on Good Morning America. We just uh, had our spring thriller there, you know, which got the tweets went crazy. Went crazy, you know what I mean? 300,000 impressions, you know what I'm saying, on the first day went bananas. So... Shout out to everybody, man, who was a part of this video, man, and it's, it's bananas. I'm not saying this because I did the song, and it's my team, you know, that all came together. It amazes me every time I watch it, you know, and I know good material when I see good material. This video is crazy. When y'all see it, y'all gonna love it. You know one thing I love about the video is I feel that it was not a rush job. There's a lot of videos that I see, particularly by artists that are not signed, and it's rush. They shoot them one day and they edit tomorrow and it's out. But it seemed like I took the time with the costumes and the makeup. Like, like all of our hell of a job, man. Yeah, man. Um, Everybody came through collectively. We made it happen. And it came out as a masterpiece. Do you believe that creativity is lacking in the music period? And Pharrell, do you believe that he was being creative or gay with his Chanel boots? All right, I'm going to start with the first question you asked me as far as the creativity with music now. Of course, creativity is lacking in music. 
You just see Missy Elliott just post something about on Twitter saying how back in the 90s, artists didn't have the same identity. They didn't have the same flow and the same character. So, yes, we are missing a lot of creativity in music right now. And to the next question that you asked me, um, Pharrell, right? Well, Yeah, with the Chanel boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on his neck, man. You know, like I respect Pharrell, man. Big up to Pharrell. You know, he's a he's a great producer. I'm in the same lane. I'm doing the same thing that he's doing. You know, um, I develop artists. Um, I song write. I produce. So I'm in the same lane as him, man. Big up to him. But I'm on his neck. I'm coming straight for you, man. But anyway, um, far as his dress code and what he's doing, I'm not going to judge him because he's wearing high heel boots and say that he's gay. Sometimes the status in your life change and you're around certain people and you grasp onto things that you're around and you start feeling it. And maybe he likes, you know, he's probably out in London, Paris, you know, France, wherever he's at. And, um, you know, they have a different dress code. You can't even get some of their clothes in a 2X, you know what I mean? It's that European look. So that's how he's wearing his clothes. I'm not going to judge him for that or say he's gay. It's just music has always had creativity, you know. Image is everything. So you're not going to catch me doing that. Don't get that wrong. I'm not Thank wearing you. no Thank you. Glad we cleared that up early because you know that was coming. <laughs> you know, I'm all you about know. that spike life if you see. You know, I'm very Yeah, no, those spikes are sick. Yeah, definite, man. Thanks. Yeah, no doubt. And I see that you got guns under them shirts, man. Are you into the gym real heavy these days? Yeah, I'm working out, man. Um... Smash Hits, a.k.a. Captain Hook, a.k.a. the Black Fonzie, a.k.a. the Silverback. You know, and the reason why I came up with the Silverback movement is because um, uh, I'm trying to be on my health thing right now. And um, a lot of things start in the kitchen, you know, so it's not always in the gym. I see people in the gym working out, and they work out, and they work out, and they just don't get that look. But for you to get that look, it starts in the kitchen. If you want that rip look, you know the sexy look, man. That's what's going on right now, you know? Yeah, and um, I noticed that typically when it, it comes to girls wanting the guys, you know, the, the big overweight look that a lot of um, our hip-hop superstars back in the days has played out now, you know? Like, chicks used to love a guy 1,000 pounds, like, with no problem. Like, you know, the baddest chick in the club. But I see things change now, man. Now, when it comes to your health and fitness would you shy away from a cheeseburger and some fries? Nah, it's not that. Um, it's all about training. It's all about training. So you can eat things in moderation, but just don't go overboard. Right. How would you describe your sound, man? Wow. Well, um, a lot of people see me promoting this Universal Airlines project, and they ask me, what do you mean? What What is Universal Airlines? Basically, my music is going to travel across the world. And my sound, I, I don't have no sound. You know, I don't have no style. My style is whatever the beat tell me to do, whatever I do. I mean, whatever the, the mode, you know, however I wake up that day, however I feel. You know, I can create all types of music. So I really don't have no sound, man, because I have so much music. It's crazy. You know, like I said, I do pop music. I do rock music. I can do country music. I can do alternative music. Any lane you want to take it to, let's get there. Put me in the studio and I'll show you. So what about that auto-tune? How do you feel about the auto-tune? I was listening to a show the other day and somebody went off about people who use the auto-tune. I believe it's dope when it's used correctively and effectively. What is your take on it? Well... If you know music, auto-tunes is used on everybody's voice, period. It's just uh, some people might use a certain percentage and more than others. But if you want that right sound, auto-tunes make your voice glide. So if you're into music and you know about engineering, everybody uses auto-tunes. So and you know what? What, it is. what you just said is 100% truth. I was watching YouTube, and they said exactly what you said. They said everybody... Use auto tune. Just, yes, just tell somebody that T Pain he just stretches it. Right. You know, that gives him his sound and that's his identity and that's what he's known for. So it is what it is. Chicka chicka chicka. Let's talk about creative process. How do you come up with your music? Are are you a drinker? Are you a smoker? How does it happen for you? Uh, 
<laughs> now I don't need the alcohol, I don't need the drugs to make me create music. I create music naturally. You know what I mean? Music get me high. Okay, well, I know she said you don't need it, but do you like it? Like, I'm going to tell you like this. When I was writing books back in the days, I used to do my thing and then start typing, you know, because it took me to a whole nother level. Yeah, I understand. You know, I like to go out, have a drink or two, you know, socialize, mingle. Of course, have a good time. That's all. But far as when it comes to my music, I don't need that to make music, you know. Um, I, I told you, music make me high. No doubt. I'm quite sure you get extra high than off of that music, man. <laughs> now, look, you're not a spring chicken in this. Despite what people think, man, you've been rolling with some heavy hitters in this game, man. Right. People like um Jim Jones. Right. Shout out to Jim. Rich Boy. Shout out to Rich. Um, Antonio Vargas or Fargas. I always mess his name up. Antonio Fargas. All right, don't come and jack me up for that. Shouts out to him, man. Now, how do you um, actually get the connection with these um, individuals? Um, Shout out to Freddie Robinson. I was rapping first. I went by the name of the Milkman. Uh, Freddie got my CD, and um, he heard my music, thought it was good, came and seen me. He asked me, did I ever want to sell my songs? I said, sure. He took me to New York. First day, first time. It was like, it was like God, you know. It was the first day I met Jim, first time he heard the music. I had 12 tracks on the CD. He got the track two, and it was over since then. He was like, who did this track? You know, I raised my hand. I'm like, I did it. He like, you mind if I put that in the computer? You know, I looked at Fred. Fred looked at me. I'm like, Fred was like, let's do it. So let's do it. And it was history since then. That's when the uh, doors of the industry broke open. Now that you're dealing with those um, heavyweights, is it like raps for the unsigned artists out here? Like, um, can they even afford a, a smash hits track now? <laughs> <laughs> nah, definitely, man. I work with everybody. I'm just all about business. And, um... You know, doing things organized in the right way. Because everything is black and white at the end of the day, you know. Handshakes is over with me. You know, I know I know you. I grew up with you and we cool and all that. But everything is uh, business. All right. Let's um, talk about Rich Boy. Rich Boy, um, when he first came out, man, throw some D's on it was like my favorite anthem from this dude. Okay, so you did on um, production with him and with Doby RP to him. What was the experience like working with those individuals? It was great, man. Shout out to Dev Beats and Mr. Raj. You know, they came through on the track. And um, Mr. Raj is a, a multi-producer, multi, multi-platinum multi producer. And, you know, Dev, me and Dev met up. Shout out to Pac. Pac introduced me and Dev. Dev is my homeboy, man. 100 grand, you know. Shout Good out to advisor. Beats. You know, always there for me. So... He, I had connects, he had connects. We got together. He brought me to see Mr. Raj. Rich was doing his album at the time. And like I said, my name is Smash Hits, a.k.a. Captain Hook. My hook game is sick. You hear me? I don't just make beats. I make, I tailor make beats, man. I'm a producer. So it's been to the point where every beat that I make, I know it's supposed to be on it. I make artist jobs easier. You know, and you guys got to accept that. It's nothing wrong with taking a song from a producer that wrote the rhymes. I know you got hot rhymes, and yeah, you write, you you all, you're good. But if somebody got a song for you that fits your image, fits your character, take that. You know, same way Denzel takes a script that a, directs, a, directs, a director sees him playing and tell him, here, act this. Same thing. All right, let's go back to um, Doe B for a minute, man. Um, I don't know the relationship like how well you knew him and all that, but I know with me, when I work with an artist, we develop a bond. And um, like, within the, like within the past year, man, there was an artist, you know, one passed away, then a few years before, one got murdered. Okay, Doe B recently passed away. Does that affect you when, you know, the artist does um, die like that? Well, yeah, it's really crazy because I really have a song with an artist, you know, that was signed, 
you know, it's like a Tupac issue. It's like a Biggie thing. You know, he just got signed to uh, Hustle Gang. Shout out to T.I. And, yeah, of course, man, you know, cool dude. You know, I just met him. You know, all we did was work together, you know. I didn't know him on a personal level. You know, that happens a lot. You know, a lot of the labels might, you know, connect artists together. So, but as far as him passing, of course, man, he had a he had a bright future ahead of him. And somebody took his life away. So, yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, it's the same thing that I experienced. Some rest in peace to Red Ghost and Roland McLaren Jr. He just passed away. That was, that was yeah, my partner true, for a true. long time, man. Crazy. All right, now, before you got into the music, you was a hustler. The feds came kicking down the door. I'm, I'm assuming it went down like that. <laughs> and he said, enough of this ish. I'm doing music. Is that how it went down? Oh, man. Um, yeah. I really don't like talking about that part of my life. That's why I say, you know, some of these cats out here, is, they think you got to explain your music. That's similar to Fab. Fab had gun charges and... You don't have to always explain your life and talk about what you... When you make music, you make music. You know, you make music for everybody. You talk about different experiences. So I really don't like to talk about that part of my life, but, you know... Well, I'm a journalist, so I'm going to dig. That's what we do here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. a part of my bio, definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, that's how I, I, um, that's how I came up with The Milkman. It was like a little gimmick, you know, to clean up, you know what I was doing on the streets or whatever. But I changed my life, man. All that's over with, you know. I'm okay, all right, y'all. He's trying to rush me through this. So we're going we gonna to move along to something a little lighter, okay? Now, as a producer, when you record your music and all, do you save? And I was listening to DJ Khaled. Not only do he save, he back up his music. Then he backs up his backup. How do you feel about that? And I'm only asking because I lost a lot of stuff, man. Better have I a backup, right man. I just lost a lot of backup that I had backed up and backed up. So, yeah, sometimes it takes far, five internal hard drives, you know, just to keep that music stored because you never know what's going to happen. True. Now, tonight, if you're a fighting fan, okay, Pacquiao versus Mayweather. You already know, so I'm assuming Stop you go with, going with the money team? Exactly. Stop playing. Stop playing. Let's go. No doubt. But um, what, what's up with the rumor that he's getting knocked out, Um, that um, Mayweather's going to get knocked out 10th round? Did you hear that rumor? No. And I don't want to hear it because Mayweather's going to win. I got some <laughs> I money just made a dad over a rumor. I, I had a Facebook conversation fight. talk about that. Mayweather's going <laughs> to win. You know what? Mayweather's okay, but he's just like so cocky and arrogant. And when people like that, sometimes people want to see them get knocked off the mountain. No, nah, I had to speak. I had to uh, say this to a person the other day. Mm -hmm. It's not that he's cocky and arrogant. He is confident, and he's he, he has the right to be confident. And when you're confident, it means you believe in yourself, and you've been winning for a long time. And the only people that call confident people arrogant are unconfident people because they really don't understand the passion. They don't have a passion for something, so they don't know how this man feels about whatever he's doing. Let me say this. Now, I'm a confident individual, I like to say, but now when it comes to him, I only felt that way when I saw him. He went off on his pops, man. And then all of a sudden, I just kind of looked at him frowning like, ah, I wasn't feeling that because I was raised, you know, not to talk to your mother or your father. No matter what they did, you don't, Talk to him that way, man. He was very nasty. Did you see the video I'm talking about? No, nah, I don't get too deep into the boxing like that. I just watched the fights, but I heard about it. All right. Now, we coming to a close. What I want you to do is let it be known when that Universal Airlines coming out. I'm excited, man, to know about it. So let us know when it's coming out. And are you doing any shows? Yes, definite, definite. Um, I have a lot of uh, things coming up for us with my single we trying to go all the way with this, man. This this joint is hot. It's not nothing regular that, you know, we're, we're pushing it to the limit. You know, we're pushing it. To, even Yaz, we got Cold Boy, you know, everybody. You Shots know, to Cold Boy. We're, we're a team. You know, Cash Cow, we're making this thing happen. You know, a lot of connects on deck. And we're going to make this thing happen, man. Jersey City, we about to put this on the map. All right, no doubt, man. 
give a few shout outs before you roll. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Cash Cow Team, Coalition, um, Hip Hop Junkie, Jersey City, North, my homies out in Atlanta, Alabama, Little Rock, Arkansas, Detroit, Michigan, you know, all across the world, man. Shout out. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Super Producer Smash Hits. Yeah. Yes, sir. Get the money out, good, and I gang man change. Keep my business fresh, but I gotta get my hand. I get my hand bound. I get my hand bound. The money out, good, and I gang man change. Keep my business fresh, but I gotta get my hand bound.